very bare bones Evernote web login. And also I want to let you know that I'm using Google Chrome for this. Although it's possible to use this on Safari, which I used yesterday, I have not tried it on uh, Firefox, so you'd have to experiment with that a little bit. And i um, not sure about the PC environment, but the web login is the web login. So um, why I chose Chrome is because you can have the um, this is Evernote Web Clipper is where it's all at. The Evernote Web Clipper is, is how you get uh, any browser working for you with with the Chrome stuff, okay? So similar to Zotero, you got to download it as an extension. Mm -hmm. uh, before I go any further, I want to mention that uh, on the bare bones account, you have uh, you could always determine how many uh, megabytes you have to upload stuff. If you go to the right hand side where it says your name, um, I'm using model student Johnny Tanaka. That's my pseudonym for, for the model student or just model anybody. And if you go to where it says account settings, uh, you could always figure out how much of your allotment is left before it gets renewed at the end of the month. So here you can see Johnny's got 13 days left and he's good for 59.3 megabytes of clippings and whatnot. Okay. That's not a lot especially if you intend on saving uh, PDF files and that sort, uh, which I don't recommend on, on a non-premium account. Uh, I have the premium account, and you can see it goes at 450 a month or 4000 a year. What the premium account will give you is one gigabyte of upload a month. That's a significant difference. Now, again, the allotment, what that means is that if you have the premium account at one gigabyte per per month, that means you can keep uploading gigabytes of stuff for as long as you're a user. Uh, so unlike Dropbox or, or Google Drive, you're not limited to like 30 gigabytes cap or whatever. You could just keep on uploading, uploading, uploading. Sorry, to get to this page, do I hit Go Premium? Um, to get to that page, you go to Account Settings. And from Account Settings, it's already advertised over your monthly usage. Um, I'm a strong advocate of, of the, the yearly usage at 4,000 um, because you can, you can add more stuff to your Evernote files which you can share with students and if you, if you share a lot of you know, megabytes or gigabytes of stuff, on one, actually you can put gigabytes on a file, but if you share a lot of large files with your students, it doesn't count against their cap. They just get a share to it and they can get, get access to it. Uh, as is the case with one of these books that I couldn't find a, um, an ebook version for, and I have my students reading for research writing, and I uh, clipped, uh, page clipped the entire book, and uh, they read it off that Evernote uh, notebook that I created and as I share with them. And so that's part of the reading requirements is to read through it, and they have access to it. Um, all right, so. On the Johnny Tanaka account, I'm going to go to just the basic. Whenever you want to get back to your Evernote, you just go top left here, and you're back into your account. And this is pretty much where all the action happens. On the left-hand side are your notebooks. Uh, there's a nice little place to put shortcuts for notebooks. If you have like a lot of notebooks, you can just put some of them in the shortcuts that you can get access to real quickly. And uh, there's a place here for tags. All your tags will be listed here. And join notebooks will appear here as well. Uh, one of the things I do immediately with my students is we set up share folders. Uh, that's the first step I do with my students, is I have them create a share folder with me and their peer reviewers. Okay? And that's what I'd like to do right now, is create a share folder. And it is as simple as this. Where it says notebooks, there's a tiny little triangle there. If you click that tiny little triangle, it says new notebook. So you click new notebook. And by experience, I always have them put, you know, what class that they're in, so I know how to stack those books. And I'll tell you what that means in a second. So here's R.W. Johnny Tanaka. And there we go, I've created a notebook. In that notebook, I can save a bunch of notes. Say I've got Johnny for two classes, uh, R and ARW, and also RW. Uh, so in this case, Johnny can do something like this, ARW3B, okay, and then again put his name on it. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. It's an important question though. 
Now, we're working off the web version. Yep. And I already have downloaded a version to my desktop. Yep. Which is it better to work off of at this point or in general? Um, because I'm on the computers here, I, I have to use the web version. I always use the but I'm, as soon as I get on my home computer or my office computer, my uh, uh, desktop version fires up right away. And you kind of want to set it up that way so that it could sync with whatever stuff that you have on there. So, yeah. And with the desktop version, do you have the same space limitations? It's the same space limitations. Okay. It's synced. So, we're, if, if you will, we're looking at the Google Drive version of Evernote because we're online, yeah. if that makes any sense. Yeah. With your desktop one, won't that just use the memory on your actual desktop? No. So you could have more on the desktop one, but it won't sync up? Uh, no, it doesn't work that way with yeah. Evernote. It's only cloud. Yeah, and you got to be careful with that. Uh, actually, if you start moving files around within your desktop, if you saved it in one place and then you start moving it to other folders, um, it starts getting it starts to count against your allotment. Uh, Evernote's still trying to sort that out, but it's not like uh, Dropbox or Google Drive in that way. Uh, so you got to be careful. If you put something in one folder, keep it in that one folder. Don't start moving stuff around, especially if they're large files. Okay, so Johnny has this set up and. First thing I always I tell my students, okay, share this notebook. Uh, this share is pretty important. Now remember, my I have relatively unlimited allotment. I've never hit the one gig cap in a month, and I'm and I'm saving tons of stuff. Uh, but with Johnny, what I would recommend to him is that he can in uh, when he invites me, that he should set it so that I can edit and invite others. Okay. In the event that Johnny forgets to share with his peer reviewers, I've got the peer reviewers' emails anyway, so I could have a little bit more control on my end. And also, if I want to add notes to Johnny's uh, folder, it won't count against his allotment. It'll count against mine. Quick question about what you put in the notebooks. Can you put multimedia content in, or could you upload a video into the Not video? videos. Pics, sound, uh, sound files, and that's it. YouTube videos, can you, them uh, you can put links in there, but yeah, I wouldn't put the videos, yeah. The videos are just too big, so I guess, and already I think Evernote's kind of generous with, um, you know, letting you have a one gigabyte allotment, like indefinitely. So I don't think they'll ever go near video, because, you know, HD files are getting larger and larger. So there we go. Um, my, if you know me by now, my main account is portuguesegrasshopper at gmail.com. And so I have them send it to me there. Uh, make sure they're sending it to the right email address. If they send it to Ferreira at icu.ac.jp, I don't think it's going to connect because it's going to say, hey, you don't have, Ferreira doesn't have an Evernote account. So make sure they're sending it to the right account. Okay, uh, here's. So each student in this section is that? What's the way? I'm not teaching everybody, so you have to. So yeah, I, I, you know, reserve a computer room and then I ask my students, okay guys, let's let's fire up Evernote and and then and then we do a share right away. So I'm basically I'm supposed to uh, have my students uh, or in peace students make folders so that they can share their folders with their writing teachers or is that I'm I have my RMP students set up with Evernote. With your writing. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I have my RMP set, set up with Evernote because eventually they're going to have to do um, presentation, mm -hmm. and Evernote is great for saving uh, um, visual content, you know, clippings of visual content, which they can then use or transfer over to their Google Slides. Uh, whereas Zotero can't do that, so I have them set so up. You, so you think it's a good idea to have students in RMP class to do that? Yeah, because then. I can sort of have a look at what, how they're building up their presentations and stuff. And it's just a one-stop uh, one shopping for them when they want to find those images later. One other thing about that, as Jan Paul mentioned, you know, if, if they use their ICU Yamata email account, when they graduate, they might not have access to that anymore, whereas Evernote is something they're probably going to use for a long time because it's really useful. So it makes more sense to have them registering with their Gmail account because that's theirs. Just quick, another thing I was going to say is in terms of sharing it with the ARW teacher, maybe contact your ARW teacher and see if, if they use it, and then maybe you can have the students share. 
So just to bring Ken up to speed, what we're doing is we're looking at the web version of Evernote because we don't have the standalone desktop on here. And um, I'm using an account, uh, sort of a model student account or model teacher account, and I call it Johnny Tanaka. And uh, what we're doing is setting up uh, folders so that we can share with the teacher, for example, and peer reviewers. And we all that, so I've done, I've done the same thing. Right. So, and, and then I'm recommending the can edit and invite uh, because uh, if I add stuff to the folder and I've got the premium account, which I have a lot of uh, space on, it doesn't count against their allotment. So that's why the can edit and invite is good from the teacher's point of view. I could add a ton of stuff into their folder and it won't count against them. I'm oh, sorry, how do I get to this page here? Okay. Uh, this page is, you go to the little triangle yep. next to Johnny Tanaka. Yes. Okay. Or, or right there. And then if you click that, there's a share option. I see. Okay. And when you click that, you'll get this, this window. Okay. So, um... Can you try installing the desktop version on the desktop mm -hmm. rather than the apps folder? You mean here? Yeah, so these can load apps and install them at the apps folder. Side computer, and I'm going to show you what it looks like from, from my side. I receive an invite from Johnny Tanaka, and it says, uh, add notebook. So you get something that looks like this. And Johnny's note comes down here. Here's my notebook. So it's all in the email right there. So I just got this invite from Johnny. So I'll add this notebook. Okay. Uh, open, always give you a choice to open it on the app if you have it downloaded already or open it on the web. Since I don't have the standalone, I'll go with the web version. Um, on my side, I'm looking at all my joint notebooks with the different students. And it's in alphabetical order. I should see Johnny's in here at some point. Uh, RW. RW no zone. Or did it float up to the top? Let me refresh. Can't find something, you could always do a little search on it. But you've got the list of all those student notebooks on the left, and they're alphabetical order by whatever name the students have given them. Can you rename them locally in your account without messing up their naming structure? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. But uh, you, you've just made a good know. point. I think I'm going to find Johnny's as, oh, as, yeah. as the email address that they've created, as their username. So it's an order by their username. It's kind of like a little bit gibberish, but... So there yeah, it is. I was thinking if you could rename them into your own structure without it's messing up theirs, that's a Yeah, it's worth experimenting with. Um, on my desktop version, I get it by the folder file name first. That's why I've asked them to do it as ARW or RW. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I'm going back a little bit, but uh, when, we, when we go to the share option, yep. um, on the one hand, we have share with uh -huh. people to work together, and on the other hand, we have publish to allow anyone to access with the link. I know you can do both. What I'm wondering is, with publish, uh, is the person it's shared with, do they have the ability to edit and to work that way? Or is uh, that the distinction between the I two? think that's the distinction. So when you publish it, you have ownership, but uh, whoever looks at the link doesn't have the right to add or it's take away kind stuff. It's only. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So if you go for share, uh, then you have to decide whether you want them to edit or view only, this kind of thing. So it's very similar to Google in some ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so again, Johnny doesn't have anything in his folder, so when I look at his folder, there's, it's, it's blank. So there's no surprise there. Now, I'm going to go back to, to show me how he's doing his research, this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, in order for Johnny to do that, he's going to need the extension. To get the extension is that grill on the far right-hand side. I don't, what do you call this three-line thing? Sure, got some for it, okay, I call it a grill. Looks like the front end of a car or something. I don't know. Okay, so I'm um, going to let's see settings. Okay, go into settings. So you hit that grill up here. Drop down to where it says settings. Um, then you want to go to where it says extensions. You hit extensions, and you hit get more extensions, so that you can get the Evernote Web Clipper. And that's what you're going to search for, ever, no, and, and it pops up right away. The web clipper just comes up right away. And there it is. Back up about a half a step. Sure. So extension, so extension is on the left. Yeah, right then, up here. And then what do you do after that? Get more extensions. Get more, oh. Ever, no, web clipper. And it's ever, no, web clipper. 
Okay. Um, you've got apps, extensions. This is the one you want. On the left hand side, make sure you're clipping for extensions. So the Evernote Web Clipper extension. Be careful, there's a difference between that and, and apps. So just go for the extensions. I can answer the app question later. That's more a Google thing, but let's go for the extension for now. And we should see a really cool little elephant icon popping up there. And when you click, usually the, the icon doesn't have this little red thing on it. If it does, it's because you're not signed in. So you got to put in your username. Username or the email account that you use is optional. Uh, okay, and then you sign in. So what do you mean uh, if I'm in Chrome? Well, or Safari on your, your iPad, is there a web So button? what I use for my iPad, I either open up Evernote directly, which I, you could do that with, or you use Skitch. No, I have to too. Depends what you're clipping. I would say a news page or something like that. Pardon me? Like BBC page or CNN or something. So if you go onto the BBC page and, it, and you're looking right at it, I would uh, copy the, the link and, and then paste it into an Evernote. Or if I'm using Skitch, I could do a screenshot of it. Because I usually go into that via Feedly, and if I watch those things via Feedly, there's an Evernote. Feedly will allow you to send it there. straight up to Evernote, which I is kind of cool. If it was only doing that the browser, we'll have no uh, can I download web? Can I download Web Clipper into my standalone? Or would you go ah, to the button that you put in the browser will work with a standalone download. The web based one basically will add you to any other thing that you will open as long as you add your button. So you need to open it. Just do it. Sorry, I should have noticed. Could you log into that? going on. What are you guys doing? Uh, he getting the web up for his safari. Got it. Prairie fires, that's a recommend. Yeah, stomp them out. Yeah, you can talk with them. Okay, so question. So this is the version of Evernote. 
Yeah. So uh, if I use my desktop widget, um, which I downloaded, yeah. um, I see the mouse um, scroll is icon. Yeah. So how yeah. yeah. do no, it's circling. They're basically for all of the Apple since about the uh, line, so they've made the scroll the same here, way as on the iPad. Yeah, yeah, you've got a Windows at home, you're an older one, it's on the way around. It's very intuitive if you're using an iPad, it's already on the same way. What your desktop is trying to do is pair up with the iPad. So if I just click and see, you know by now, it's not a stickler. It's in the cloud. And then what you want your desktop to do is sync with the cloud. I don't even think there's a way to reverse And sometimes that takes a bit of time. That's why you have a sync button. Because it's always talking to this web version. Okay, um, I'm ready to move on. Next step. Yes. Uh, here we go. Uh, Amazon.com. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's go Amazon.com books. Let's go books. Come on, stop doing that. Why does it do that? Okay. Okay, I'm in books, I think. I'm in books. Um, Inspired from yesterday's RMP 2D, um, RMP 2D lecture. I'm using the theme of hate speech. Say Johnny Tanaka is working on a paper on hate speech. He finds this book in Amazon. So here's where it it's not like Zotero, but still kind of cool. Is uh, if the student wanted to bookmark this to read at a later date or look at it later on, they let me back up a little bit. Um, they go to the elephant up here. They are then presented with several options. The options being article, simplified article, full page, bookmark, and screenshot. Um, <clears throat> I recommend a combination. Uh, full page is, you can see there's a green border right now. And so what's going to happen is, and the green border continues down to the whole page that you can't see on your screen. And what's going to happen is that page will be saved onto the on uh, as a note within a text within a notebook that you choose. Now this is really important, okay? Because you're, there's the generic notebook, and then there's an option to choose the different notebooks that you have. Uh, in this case, if Johnny's doing this for his um, RW paper, then he should choose the RW notebook. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay, so choose what notebook you want to go into. Uh, not the end of the world if you saved it into the other notebook because you could then always move it on later on on your desktop version. You could also add a tag. Um, tags are optional. If you're in a hurry, don't worry with tags because you could do a search in Evernote anyways if you remember something about the title. Uh, Evernote is good for that. It'll pull up, for example, if he goes into his notes, he, he knows he didn't tag it, tag it, but he knows it was something on hate or something to do with speech. If Johnny searches that, It'll, what Evernote does is it pulls up all the things related to hate or speech, which explains why it's an elephant logo, because it's like good at remembering stuff. And in a way, you could think of Evernote as your own personal Google. So you can dump a lot of stuff in there, and if your brain works anything like my brain does, you only remember like a keyword for something, like just a word. <coughs> Typing in that word into Evernote will hopefully pull it up. Um, you could add a remark too. Seems like a good read, something like that. And I'm not going to go with any tags right now. I'm just going to save it like this as a full page. I'm going to save it as a full page. And I'm also going to save it as another kind of save. Just hold on a second. Let this, it's synced right now. It's in my, it's in my notes. Um, I'm going to back out of here and also save it. This one I really recommend as well is the bookmark version. Look what happens when you click bookmark. You get something that looks like this and a little brief description that goes with it. Okay. Um, I like the bookmark version sometimes more, um, especially when I'm sharing with students, because 
the full page version, it's sometimes hard for the student to go from the full page version back to the original website that it came from. Whereas if you give it a bookmark, if they click that link from where they don't know, they'll get right to that page. And I'll show you how that works on the Johnny Tanaka side. Question. What is the difference between article and simplified article? Some, some pages get simplified. Like, do you use Pocket like a reader? Uh, Pocket will take a, a web page, clean out all the noise, and just give you the article. No lines, no photos. Yeah. And, and I didn't get that option with... I mean, could you select to do article and bookmark and screenshot at the same time, or would you need to do it three times? Let me see. If I do simplified article, look what happens. I get something that looks like this. Not very useful. I don't know what it's simplifying, actually. It looks like it's simplifying the pricing back there. I'm not sure what's, what's going on with that. Well, it's because you have a book, but if you had, say, a newspaper, a newspaper article, so yeah. it then it gets rid of all yeah, the Yeah, yeah. The newspaper articles works really well. Can, can you select multiples at the same time, or is it either or? For it's just one at, one at a time. Yeah. OK, let's look inside Johnny's webmail version. Uh, I think is it this one, this one here. Um, I don't see anything right now because I'm not looking in a notebook. If I go into the notebook itself, sometimes a command R would be a nice little refresh for the screen so that it can come in there. Um, command R is a refresh, oh. yes, and or this thing. Okay, so that refreshes your screen, so it updates the, the webmail. Now, he's got the two notes in there. Can you see that? One of them is the bookmark version, and the second one, which is actually the first one that I saved, is kind of like the, the full uh, web page version. Web page versions sometimes are really hard to read, so it's a good idea to cl click one of these things that, that pops it out, so you can read it a little bit better. Uh, I believe it's this one right here. Open this note in a new window. So if I do that, then I get a cleaner look to it. I could see more of, of the full page. And sometimes that's that's good when you have like a lot of images and stuff like that. Okay. You mentioned earlier on about like, having files in multiple folders would heat up your limit. Yeah. Can you show the students how to use tags instead of doing that? Because then there would only be one copy and it won't have the limit. Uh, no, but I do show them the search for a function. And so even moving stuff around to folders, there's always the risk of it eating up your allotment. Mm -hmm. So I just say, just search Lights it by, yeah, just search it by, by some keyword that you remember. Uh, Evernote will usually start filling up your folder in order of the last one that it was received first. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. And then it circles on this way. Can you um, change that or is that fixed? Maybe the desktop version you can change it. That's a good question. Okay, I'm going to look at my side now and see if I've got anything. I hope this is the thing. You, you need to log off the other one first. Yeah, one. yeah down there you have view options where you can change the uh, view options. Okay. I'm just looking at my giant Macro folder. I think because I had the wrong folder from last night. How quickly do these sync when you know when you've loaded up? And one is it like a few seconds? The desktop is always slow, if you, especially if you put a lot of stuff on there. But the web version, if it's on there, it's on there. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking at my Johnny folder on this side. So far, I don't have anything. How do I change it? Okay, if I go down here? You are, you are the oh, the view options right here? Yeah. yeah. So there's the answer to your question, Rob. Title ascending, title descending, oh, okay. this kind of stuff. So even the web version has some nice things to it. Okay, I'm now changing computers to the teacher computer. Okay. Um, so, Tetsia, what did you say? How do I change it? If I go down here? You were you talking about sorting the files. Oh, the view options right here? Yeah. yeah. So there's the answer to your question, Robert. 
title ascending, title descending, oh. and this kind of stuff. So even the web version has some nice things to it. Okay, I'm now changing computers to the teacher computer to show you what it looks like on my end. And it's going to look more or less identical, with the exception that I have all these other folders in there. So now I'm looking at Johnny's folder. So if I, when I look into Johnny's folder, lo and behold, I have the same thing. Um, so I'm looking at his thing on hate speech. Uh, Johnny didn't go to the library database lecture like I told him. So um, I'm going to get a source in here that I think might be able to help him out. I'm going to go ICU library. And then I'm going to go research database tools, database list, uh, ProQuest. ProQuest, type in hate speech. Oops, let's try that again. Okay, um, should hate speech be a crime? Clip that. It's like, man, Johnny should be reading this book. It's got a lot of, or is this a book? No, it's an article. Um, and so I'm going to recommend it to him. And the way I'm going to do that is, well, let me make sure I'm signed in first. So the next tutorial, when he shows up, you can give me some feedback on that article I clipped for him. Um, my default folder is A to Z notebook, but I want to get Johnny's in there. And if you start typing in Johnny, right away, it gives me my options. There he is. He's right there. Boom. Click that one. Um, um, let's talk about this one at the next tutorial. Okay. I'm going to save it as, well, at this point, Full, again, remember I said that full page bookmark thing is a bit tricky, but I want him to read it uh, and not, not panic about it. And if he's a, you know, wants to know how to do it with ProQuest, maybe we can do that into tutorial as well. But I want it to just pop up in his face and he could see, oh, ProQuest is great, right? He's got all these like, little yellow tags in there with hate speech on it. Uh, so that's the summary of the book, right? Uh, uh, looks like it's the whole article, yeah. So I'm going to click full page, okay, and I'm going to save it in the Johnny Tanaka folder. So I'm going to save it right there. Boom, let's see what it looks like on Johnny's side. Um, what's really cool is if you have the desktop version and you're on a Mac, you can set up your notifications to have a, noti um, a notification to tell you when students are adding stuff on in the folders. And you see a little icon pop up right inside this Evernote. Dare Dare has added. Uh, something to the folder, and, and you can see who's working. So I want to give you an interpretation. Um, students were originally taught or encouraged to email the relevant articles to themselves uh, from the library, okay. and the, so they can email it to, especially their ICU email account. And so this supersedes that because it allows them to immediately download it to a central notebook. So is that what we're looking at the advantage? Say they do that anyways. Um, if you're looking at an email, let's see. If you go to ProQuest, and you, you should be able to email the article, the full text article, to yourself. You can also save webmails to your folder. So if you get an email to yourself, you can save it with web, and it saves it, saves it as a webmail very readable, very easy to access with links in it and stuff like that. For some reason, it's not working. Um, let me go back to Johnny's thing. Um, again, Johnny opens it up. There's nothing in there. If I refresh my screen, hopefully it'll pop in there. He's, a, he's allowed me. There it is. So now, he gets something that's like this. There's my little note saying, let's talk about this in the next tutorial. He can see the pro quest that's in there. Uh, to read it better, you can pop it up, and boom, he starts getting some documents. And if he wants, he could he could add notes to this notes too. He can edit this as well. And it shows it's from the teacher. Yeah, and that's from me, sending it back to him. Johnny can see. Yeah. 
And so, you know, when they're working on slides and stuff like that, I could recommend even some photos for the slides and I can show that and send it to them. This kind of stuff. Um, can I ask you a question that's related to that? So I'm over on the student side and I have the, the highlighting function. Yeah. And so if he, and, and this highlighting function seems to, the rest of you can't see this, but it comes up automatically. And so I'm able to highlight it. You know, let's say I highlight a paragraph and then I save it. You should be able to see it too. And would he be able to say, would, you know, could he say, would this sure. be useful information yeah. for my paper? Yeah. yeah. You can highlight it. Okay, fact, so I've highlighted it. Yeah. Um, a Which one is it, Ken? Did you say, um, let me see, get out of here. Oh, sorry, you know, I didn't save it here. I need to save it in the right place. I keep getting this thing, so just... Because, yeah, there's a highlighting feature. There's the clipping feature. Um, There we go. So I'm, um, I'm saving it now. So not bookmark, right? It was just the article? Or was it's it the same article. Same article that you yeah, have. Just the article. Which should be yeah, This is a bad example. What if I go here? What's really cool is if you have the desktop version and you're on a Mac, you can set up your notifications to have a, not um, a notification to tell you when students are adding stuff on in the folders. And you see a little icon pop on the right hand side that says Evernote. Dare Dare has added uh, something to their folder and you, and you can see who's working. So I want to give you an interpretation. Um, students were originally taught or encouraged to email the relevant articles to themselves okay. uh, from the library. Okay. And this, so they can email it to especially their ICU email account. And so this supersedes that because it allows them to immediately download it to a central notebook. Yeah. So is that what we're looking at the advantage? Say they do that anyways. Um, if you're looking at an email, um, let's see, if let me get something. If you request, and you, you should be able to email the article, the full text article, to yourself. You can also save webmails to your folder. So if you get an email to yourself, you can save it with web and it saves it saves it as a web mail, very readable, very easy to access with links in it and stuff like that. For some reason it's not working here. I don't know why. Um, let me go back to Johnny's thing. Um, again, Johnny opens it up, there's nothing in there. If I refresh my screen, hopefully it'll pop in there. Because if he's allowed me there it is. So now he gets something that's like this. There's my little note saying, let's talk about this in the next tutorial. You can see the ProQuest that's in there. Uh, to read it better, you can pop it out. And boom, he starts getting something like this. Okay. And if he wants, he could, he could add notes to this notes, too. He can edit this as well. Does it show it's from the teacher? Yeah, and that's from me, sending it back to him. Johnny can see it's yeah. from you. And so, you know, when they're working on slides and stuff like that, I could recommend even some photos for their slides, and I can clip that and send it to them and oh. this kind of stuff. Um, can I ask you a question sure. that's related to that? So I'm over on the student side, and, and I have the, the highlighting function. Yeah. And so if he, and, and this highlighting function seems to, the rest of you can't see this, but it comes up automatically. So I'm able to highlight it. You know, let's say I highlight a paragraph. And then I save it. You should be able to see it too. And would he be able to say, would you know, would he say, would this sure. be useful information yeah. for my paper? Yeah. yeah. He can highlight it. In and fact, I there's. I highlighted it. Yeah. Um, Which one is it, Ken? Did you say? Um, oops, let me get out of here. Oh, sorry. You know, I didn't say. You know, I need to save it in the right place. I keep getting this thing, so let me just refresh this. Because, yeah, there's a highlighting feature. There's the clipping feature. Um, for some reason. OK, let's cancel that. There we go. Um, so not bookmark, right? It was just article? Or was it it's simplified? It's the same article. Same article. OK, just article. Yeah, this is a bad example. What if I go here? Yeah, you can see like a little highlighting icon thing pop up yeah. there. 
but this page is not very highlight Maybe friendly. Need a text page or well, I, I'm a huge fan of the screenshot one. So, for example, you know, if, if I tell them, "Hey, you want to go to the resources? Go here," you know, and just sort of move that around, uh, you know, and then add your words to it and say, you know, um, click here for tools, you know, and then Could save that. Show to you them. just did that again. Just sure. The whole, um, yeah. From the start. Yeah. We've got the page. Okay. So again, oops. So yeah, and Skitches desktop Skitch is much easier to use, but this is not bad either. Um, here we go. I go down to screenshot. Okay. And you can see I've got the uh, crosshairs here. Um, and if you wanted to teach a student, you know, how to use the library sources, you could say, you know, you've got a choice now of arrows, highlighter, you know, like this kind of thing. You can highlight like that if you wanted to, or, sorry, again, highlight. You can click on uh, arrow, so I'm already on arrow. I can put text boxes, whatever I want, like that. Turn it around. You could add some text. Yeah, this is really powerful, though. Just yeah. Annotation. Yeah. Click here. Uh, Skitch is much better. The desktop version of Skitch is much better. Um, also, if you're worried about privacy, well, hey, you know, we can take care of that. You want to see what I'm done with the teachers' folk and the uh, <laughs> class? Right. Have we been enhanced? <laughs> right. You worried about privacy? No problem. We can take care of that. Are you are using these? These are function chat. It's right here. Yeah. yeah. Right out of that. Right yeah. Out. And you could. So they pop up with, with the um, uh, screenshot. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll just add it to Johnny Tanaka's book and then boom, save it there. He's got it now. So sometimes it's like, it's good for just saying, hey, do it like this, yeah. like that. And of course, uh, Evernote being a Evernote promoting their products, they say, get sketch. Terrible name for a, a great tool. And it just lays it just lays on top of Skitch, or or I mean it it activates at the same time you open. So I created a shortcut for Skitch. So it's con, you know Command Shift Five, and then my crosshairs pull up, and then I can anything on my desktop. Skitch is a desktop version of what I just showed you with the little elephant things here. It used to be only work the Skitch. I'm not sure. I uh, Sketch no first came out, it was a Mac only, so yeah. I showed it to my this Mac. This is a good question. Students, the Windows guys so weren't happy. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't have bought a computer. Yeah. So if you just scroll down, so you'd see the green line covers everything. It's a standalone, it's on the desktop. And it's not just a web clipper, it's a anything on your desktop yeah. clipper. Yep, so you can just click it. Oh, I see. So, so this is limiting you to, to just what's on an internet page, right? But Sketch, if you download it as a standalone on your desktop, you can you can do anything on your desktop including web pages. Like articles, I just so they're just you can, you can as yeah, homework assignments sometimes, so that's actually your Sure. So sometimes what I do is I open up a PDF, I sketch that, and I just take that as a picture and I throw it into a student's, into a, a note, and I share that note with the student saying, read this. Um, they don't even need to download a, a PDF or anything like that. And sketch can be only from there or no, no, you can you know, do a Google search and, and then download Sketch for Mac. Download Sketch for Windows. I don't, that, really? I don't know, it's a good question. But a few years, back in the CM days when I first showed Sketch to students, there wasn't a Windows version. Yeah. Because Windows wasn't available yet. Yeah. So I think Can't spell Windows. Sorry, it's not happening. Sketch for Windows. I don't know. Is it? Sketch Evernote. Yeah, Windows 8. Hey, you got the Windows 8 version. Knock yourself out. Okay. Um, that's it. That's that's basic Evernote. Um, students can share notes with each other if, if they want. So just to show you that if if somebody else in a class is saying, hey, you know, Johnny, you you were talking about that that book that you saw on Amazon. That was really cool. Could I read it? He's like, no problem. So he could share it with somebody. So he can just click share. 
and then he can email it to someone, he can Twitter it, Facebook it, email it, okay, and just send it to a friend. And that friend will get the same note. Other things that are really, really cool is he could set a little calendar for himself and say, you know, on October 3rd in the morning, October 3rd, wait, change date, in AM, he'll get a notification saying, read this. You can set up uh, a calendar for it as well, and I think that's really cool. That's, that's Skitch trying to take over the world. I mean, Evernote trying to take over the world, adding this reminders thing. Can, can you only share from within the desktop version, or can you do it from Web Clipper too? If you find something interesting and clip it, can you share from Well, this is it, right? I'm using the web version right now. Right? So you're asking about sharing notes? Yeah, but you're with it. Sorry. But from the clipper, I guess. If you uh, OK, the let's try that. From the, from the clipper. OK, let's try that. So I'm going to bookmark it and uh, options. <laughs> uh, let's see. So you want to you want to not only just clip it, but you want to two in one, right? You want to clip it and then, and then say, here's the thing. Yeah, here it goes. You ready? So I'm going to save this again. Boom. And you gotta go in, then you and go no, in. then you've got oh, these options up, up here. Right yeah. Oh, okay. Link. Okay. Do, 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 G yeah, plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that sort of fits. It's right after you save it. Right after you yeah. save it, you can then send it somewhere off, or you can create a reminder right away to read it later on. Okay. It's um 12:27. Time is quickly slipping by, but I really want to move on to something else that I think is really, really, really cool. Okay. Um, so uh, I could do an Evernote 2.0 lesson later on, like for power users. So if you get like the premium Evernote, I could really knock your socks off with what you can do with it. Used but to be the premium one was the only one that would search for text inside photos and JPEGs. Is that still the that's, case? That's still the case. So it even reads handwriting. One, yeah, it reads what's in the document, and it also reads your handwriting. Your atrocious handwriting, yes, Evernote can read it. Wow. So that's really cool.